Well, unfortunately Halloween is over. But before I pack up everything until next year, I figured I'd go ahead and make a video of this. This is the first pneumatic prop I ever made. Uh, I put this together last year. I recently uh, released a video where I showed how to convert a pneumatic cylinder or a pneumatic door closer into a pneumatic cylinder for purposes such as this. So I figured I would make a video of the first prop I ever made using that technique. So we'll start over here at the compressor. This is a 125 PSI Craftsman air compressor. Uh, it's oil is uh, oiled direct drive in case anybody's wondering. So we regulate the pressure in this case down to around 60. I found that 60 actually works really well for both of the, the pneumatic props I have right now. Anything more they tend to want to shred themselves apart. Anything less and they just don't have a good actuation speed. So the hose comes around here and we won't go into too much detail on the uh, actual pneumatics section of it. This has been converted in pretty much the exact same way uh, as in the video I recently posted. The only difference is some of the fittings and hoses and stuff look a bit different because a lot of them were put together with stuff I had lying around. Uh, it's the same AirTac 110 uh, volt, 110 volt uh, solenoid valve and the only difference with the door closer is that it's an older model and it's built a little uh, heavier duty. So the base of the prop is just made out of wood. At the bottom here, we have a gate hinge. I'm gonna go ahead and kick it up so you, we can see this. Okay, so the gate hinge is bolted down to the wood and then welded to the hinge is a piece of square bar. And at the bottom here, we have another piece of flat bar, uh, which is for uh, the cylinder to connect to. This chain is a limit chain. The reason this is there is because we rely on the spring inside the pneumatic cylinder to retract him as well as gravity. And the problem is that because of the stroke of the cylinder, if you'll notice, that's not the full stroke of this cylinder. If at full stroke, the cylinder gets all the way out to about here. And the problem with that is we end up going, uh, it, there's, there's a couple problems. The first problem is that this guy ends up way too far forward and it just looks weird. The second problem is that uh, we end up going over center of the hinge. And what that means is that instead of the spring wanting to pull him back this way and down, uh, it ends up wanting to push him farther forward and it all just jams up and doesn't work. So the limiting chain is here to make sure he stops right there which is the point at which everything likes to function properly. It's also the point at which it looks proper. And then over here, just a little rubber stopper for when it comes back down to cushion it a little bit. Uh, the reason this bracket is like this is because if the screw was simply screwed straight into the wood and didn't have the support on the end, it would very quickly work itself loose because it would be going back and forth. Uh, and if you've ever uh, worked with long screws like this that are meant for wood you probably know that they don't handle side loads very well if you hit a, a screw like this with a hammer sideways it'll very easily just break off so we have this bracket here to help provide support so that that does not happen uh, this whole gizmo is basically uh, just to make the eyes and the skull light up this is a light up skull um, I'm not going to go into too much detail right now because we can make another video on that, but essentially the skull got a little rewired and then the wire comes down here. So this is a 120 volt solenoid, uh, I'm sorry, relay, which is just piggybacked on the, uh, off of the uh, power feed for the solenoid valve and it sends power up into the skull to make the eyes light up. So I'll show you how this works now. Oh yes, yeah, so I almost forgot. The way I like to actuate these, the reason I use the 110 volt solenoid valves is because I like to just plug them into one of these little remote control outlets and then I can just simply use this remote to turn it on and off. And the great thing about this is if you have more than one prop, you can use uh, one remote for up to three props uh, because you have up to three outlets. So right now it's on. I don't know if you can see the light on there indicating it's on and of course he's up and the eyes are on. So we hit the off button and he will retract back down. So 
like I said, this is regulated to about 60 PSI. You want to play with it depending on your prop. So if we hit the on button, he pops up, the eyes come on, and he will stay up like that until either I run out of air pressure, which probably isn't going to happen because there's no air leaks, or until I hit the off button, uh, which can be handy at times. So I hit the off button, and he goes back down. Now the skeleton itself is just a cheap skeleton. You can get these uh, plastic skeletons from any number of places. This one came from Home Depot. Uh, nothing really special about them. The only thing is we have to disconnect the legs. Uh, I just usually set them right around here because most people don't notice that they aren't actually connected to them when it's dark. The reason we disconnect them is because the joints are supposed to be posable and will lock into position. And if I had these connected while this was actuating, it would just completely tear these joints apart and just permanently ruin them. So um, I like to actually use the skeleton for other things leading up to Halloween. So I don't want to rip the joints apart. So I take them off uh, when I put them on here. The way he's secured is pretty simple. Uh, this is actually just a bunch of rags with Gorilla Tape wrapped around them. There's uh, a bunch here and here. The purpose of those is to uh, support the parts where the, where the uh, spine of the skeleton curves up so that he sits flat and then the skeleton is just secured with four wrappings of electrical tape. And that's all there is to it. Uh, there's no provisions for the arms right now. They just kind of flop around wherever they want to. Um, but maybe I'll do something about that in the future. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's my skeleton prop. Uh, the first year I had it, which I'll post a video of. If uh, uh, I'll probably just post a video of it anyway. Uh, I didn't have him in anything. He was just kind of like this. And unfortunately, my predictions about the base blending into the grass was wrong. Because the grass was still green because it's Florida. And a lot of people could tell that something was up with him. So this year what we did, and I don't have it with me, is I have a open bottom coffin that I put him in. And then I cover everything up with some black plastic. That way it's a little less obvious that there's something going on with him. So we get a better scare. But yeah, hopefully uh, this helps someone or you enjoyed this. And uh, I'll probably post a few more other Halloween related videos in the future.